dates it's super exciting live we're gonna be with like a nipo uh he's gonna jump on and we're gonna be talking tenders tenders uh for entrepreneurs man how do you get into the game you know tenders that you can actually access as entrep an entrepreneur where to look for these tenders you know what uh you can you know be aware of or wary of you know when you get into the game so that's basically what we're going to be talking about today man Slakanipa, how are you doing, bro? Morning, Henry. How are you? So, bro, today we are talking about tenders, man. Um, but maybe before we start, maybe you can introduce yourself, bro, uh, and what you do in the entrepreneur in entrepreneur space. Awesome, awesome. Uh, good morning to you again, Henry, and good morning to everybody. Slakanipa uh, here. For those, some of you know me, some of you don't know me, um, I run a business consulting agency that uh, basically supports small businesses. Um, it's called Botale Business Hub. That's the key one that I'm running. I've got other ones, but my main focus is BB Hub. It assists small businesses with regards to any basic services they need to start up at the lowest cost you can find out there in the market. I challenge you right now to find someone that beats my pricing. And then we also offer like free business consulting literally free business consulting you can schedule a session with me for 30 minutes up to 45 minutes at max and then we've got a whatsapp group and we share free tender alerts and free tender tips on a daily basis by next friday yeah that's me awesome man so so where can people get a hold of you man so bb hub we are available on facebook uh we're available on facebook we are available on whatsapp um they can DM me, or rather, I can share the number here that they can uh, chat uh, chat with us on, and I'm also share the link to the WhatsApp group where I engage with my clients or any other person that is interested in any opportunities that are that appear on a daily basis. Any opportunity that's out there, we always post it there. Unfortunately, only I can comment or post things on the group. No one else. It's not for marketing purposes. I don't even market myself there, and uh, yeah, that's just about it. Yeah awesome bro so okay man so we're talking tenders uh today yeah. and i think one one uh important thing for me at least is that you know most of the times when people talk about tenders and all these things and here we've got entrepreneurs we've got different people uh some people have been in business for a long time some people have been uh, you know just starting out some are doing side hustles just new to entrepreneurship uh, but sometimes when you think of tenders, we always think that, you know what, a lot of money is needed. Um, I need to, you know, I can't get into the game unless I've got this huge capital outlay, unless I've been in, in business for a long time. Is that the case? Yeah, that is the case. Um, some people feel like, look, I've been in the business for far too long. Or in the, I haven't been in the business for that long or I don't have the capital whatsoever. And then um, they find the entry very difficult, of which it might seem that way because we've got gatekeepers. And then, uh, But in, in some instances, that's not the case. I've been in a situation where my tender was awarded to me because um, the municipal manager basically felt like we need to start offering opportunities to young people that have no experience, no references, no nothing, and no capital whatsoever. And then they were able to like, you know, to pay a partial of the tender upfront for me to get myself in order and then everything else fall, fall into place thereafter. Awesome, awesome. So so, uh, so they are tender opportunities, even for, you know, a new entrance into the market, um, you know, just, uh, you know, into entrepreneurs um, who are just beginning. That is true. Yes, that is that is definitely correct. Look, um, I'm not going to lie to you guys and say it's easy. It's not easy, especially when you're in the market. It's not easy. But um, you find instances whereby they say maybe they can do a, a shared tender. If I can say 50% goes to someone that's new with no references, we will be their, our, their first reference. And then 50% will be with somebody that is more experienced. Around the collections in, in particular, you'll find that uh, finance department will say, look, 
um, let's get somebody that's experienced and someone that's not experienced. From the experience point of view, they are the ones that will be doing the collections, calling and everything. And then those without the experience will give them the tracing part of the collections whereby they are calling, they are tracing the contact details of these specific uh, uh, datas. And then once everything has been traced, they're giving it to the much more senior um, company to start making those calls and everything. Through that, you're gaining your experience. So it's sort of like a, a joint tender initiative that they would basically work on. Awesome. So you know what? Sometimes we take it for granted that people know uh, different terms or understand different uh, context uh, concepts. C can you break yeah. down what a tender is? What is it? Uh, first of all, then we can go into you know where to look for it, how to get it, and the likes. Awesome stuff. So. A tender, a tender is just a, 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 a door, rather an opportunity that's out there that invites any other business out there to come and do work, not only for the government, because we do have um, private sectors now also uh, store advertising bids. So what this basically is, I'm just going to explain it to my understanding, not to the dictionary and not to SP Google. How I understand no, it's it like is how it's like SP experience, right? That, that's yes, what we can see as well. Which awesome we also stuff. appreciate a bit more. Uh, we can't just have <laughs> uh, textbook definitions. We want people in terms of their understanding. It, because that helps a lot as well, you know? That is true. Awesome stuff. So, um, look, as much as we speak in tenders, please, guys, note that we're not only focusing on government. Even private sectors do offer such opportunities. So we're just going to be broad. This is just a disclaimer. So a tender is basically a, a, a process that is put in place by, in most cases, the state so that it can find um, bidders or rather vendors from outside to come and do government work. In most cases, you'll find that government is not allowed to do certain stuff for themselves because the opportunities must now be created for the public at large. Now, when a tender is out, um, it invites both its experience and non-experiences and non-experienced individuals or companies to come and offer or rather send an RFQ. An RFQ would be a request for code or an RFP, an RFP would be a request for a proposal. And then once they, uh, those things are out there and then you pitch or rather submitted your stuff, they will look at specific criteria. In most cases, the references will take about 10 points. So it doesn't affect you that much. 10 points is a lot if you're missing a lot of things, but if you've got everything in a, in a row, like if everything is checked, it's proper, that 10 points you really do not need. And then you'll get an MM, like I said, that might be lenient and say, let's give him a chance, man. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. And then um, that is a tender. Tender is just a bit that is available for vendors to come and apply experience and non experience. Now, experience shouldn't just, don't focus experience around business experience. Like your business has had the experience. Your individual experience counts the most. If you are new, um, uh, if you are new, or maybe I'll touch base more on experience just after answering your questions. So how do you get access to these tenders? Number one, send an email to tender alerts at Botale Business Hub, which is my business. Tender <laughs> alerts at Botale Business Hub, that's your that's it. We send you free tender alerts on a daily basis, Monday to Friday. That's step one. Step two, <laughs> Um, how do please, you get please, please type it in there. I don't know if you're able to type it in the comments. I will, so I will type. I'm doing people can get when the I, email. When I speak, I or we can post it in the group. We can post it in the WhatsApp group as well. Awesome so, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Days. Yeah. So we get tender alerts on a daily basis. I've got it, uh, an awesome team here that works for me. Uh, some are screening through tenders that are unique to my customers' industries, and some are just looking at any of the uh, tenders out there that is easy to get. We don't look at your traditional construction tenders. That's where you will find uh, tender premiers. So you are stepping into people's territories. We teach our clients that um, the best tenders to get is the ones that are not, uh, it's, it's not your traditional tenders where everybody wants it, like constructions or you know, civil engineering and stuff. We don't do that. We do more of the easy stuff. You'll find that like, municipalities hosting something and maybe you've got a story. Uh, that sells food at home, a small restaurant. Uh, they're just doing a function. They just need somebody to come and supply food. 
that's it. Nothing else. No, it's not a hectic. You just the most important thing will be the no, no, no hijacking of tenders. No, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing whatsoever. Hey. So, so we, we we try and simplify things, and then I'm trying to also educate my guys or rather everybody that um, some of the money is where you guys are not looking. Some of the money is where you guys are not looking, or maybe you don't have the knowledge around that. We've, I've recently, in my last session, thank you, Henry, thank you so much. In the last session we had um, on this on this channel, one of the guys, um, they, they called me to say, look, we are interested in what you, you spoke about around tenders. What I spoke about was government looks for a lot of indigent verifications. They want to trace individuals to update their database and everything. These guys called me. Um, once they called me, they said, look, we are interested. We loaded them on the tender alerts thereafter. They registered a company to us. And then they did like six or seven business consulting se uh, sessions with us. Their company is now sorted. They've got CSD, they're, they're wow. tender ready. Um, now I just assisted them now, now this past weekend, but it was just a conversation around consulting because, yeah, it was a conversation around consulting. And then thereafter- well, the, the people were on this live, yeah. They were on this live. Her name is wow. Tesnim. Um, I, I'm not sure. I don't think she has an issue with me saying her name because she did say, look, whatever you can, whatever you want, go for it because you've been assisting me free of charge. The only thing you charged me was to register my company. I was like, no worries. So it's Tesnim. Um, the company name is TNC Group. And then they do tracing and collections. Oh, oh, yes, wow. tracing and collections. So they basically right in there now, they are submitting their first official tender which I'm excited about. And I was assisting them to get codes with regards to the bureaus and who to call, trace from. So just to go back to that, um, I'm educating people to say tenders are broad. If you go on inside one government uh, website or rather one municipal website, you'll find that there's literally a tender for almost any industry out there. Find something that's unique to you, but I'm telling people now, play around the finance department of government. That's where a lot of money is. You can make money upfront, you can make money as you collect, you can make money every, uh, after a 30 day term, uh, after a 30 day term, depending on the payment profile that, or the payment term that you guys would have agreed to. So there's money everywhere. So you go on uh, SA Tenders, there's a website called SA Tenders. Now the problem with looking for tenders outside of the government mainframe. This excludes my company, BB Hub, is you will be exposed to a lot of fraudulent tenders. Mm. That's the first thing. Once you register on CSD, and people don't know this, CSD, the, the, the notifications do not work. Once you register on CSD and you activate the notification, you are actually sharing that details with a certain database. We don't know where it exists that is gonna send you fraudulent tenders every single day. We almost got hit by that one, whereby they wanted, um, what were they looking for? I think they were thermos scanners. No, they were boots, I think. And then we went and then they said, look, we need this to be delivered here and here. These are the types of boots we need. Once you Google that type of boot, only one company in the world, in the world is offering those boots. And then <laughs> you go in there and then you're excited. These guys are sending you a letter of appointment. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I've been doing tenders for a long time. They don't appoint you in like two or three days. Something is fishy here. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? Where are you guys? Where are you guys? Where, where, where are you guys? We want to come to your offices now. They're like, yeah, we're in Cape Town. This oh, is and you know what? I'm flying to Cape Town. It was worth like 400,000. And then um, I do apologize. Clients are going to walk into my office space. So if you hear noise in the background, please oh, yeah. ask them. Um, That's fine, right, bro. Let's go. And then, um, so yeah, we almost got hit. We came back, we looked at the domain. We realized, no man, this is a two video. What is this? Uh, a, a dot mail dot something domain. I was like, ah, we almost got hit. We almost got hit. <laughs> do, you know why, do you know why I'm laughing, bro? Yeah, yeah. Not laughing per se, it was so funny. But anyway, because my friend was actually hit <laughs> with that, you know, and his wife. Uh, they got like a, like a transnet one. You know, the emails were yeah. just, you know, it's just changed. You know, it's a trans.net, yeah, 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 yeah. or something like that, or whatever. But that was like for some part, right? It was like for a part. So I think these people, I don't know how, probably, I don't know, maybe they, they use um, 
a CIPC or something to, to know that you have a company, right? Yeah. So, so they send the wife an email, say, yes, yes, you know, we're looking for black, uh, you know, women owned companies, what, what. Mm-hmm. And we've got this part that we need to be bought. So they gave it the, the spec number and everything. Then when obviously <laughs> you just say, ah, easy money, you know, you go to Google, right? Then yep. you put in the part name and voila, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you found it. And voila, you're like, then you think, hey, can't trust it, go on Google. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Then, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the guys, they buy this part in wherever. I think it was in Cape, from Cape Town. It's not Cape yeah. Town, Devin. You know, one of these places, right? And the guys, the part was supposed to come from, um, yeah, on DHL. And the whole thing was messed up. And, and the funny thing is, they say that. These guys would answer the phone the whole time. The guys when they bought yes. the money, they, they, it's not like they'll ignore your calls. They'll say, it's mm-hmm. coming. It's mm-hmm. coming. The courier is coming. Until you yourself, you give up. So when they then went back now, then they saw this email address. It's not even a translation. It will number. hit you. It will hit you. Dude, and they, these guys, they bought this part for probably 60K and these parts. And man, it's a mess. So, so, that's so they, they, they actually operate. bought the, the, the they actually bought the stuff. No, they bought the stuff. They bought the stuff. So they that's were waiting obviously to, to take receipt of the stuff to get delivery. Then they, they send this thing to transnet. So 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 that's how it is. So these guys they'll send you an email, then they list that that part number on the internet. Mm-hmm. They know mm-hmm. you're gonna go and buy it yeah. and it, it never comes. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, that's, that, that's how they help people and I encourage people please, 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 please if something is too good to be true give us a call, call Bibi Help uh, call us, send me an email drop me a DM let me verify that for you in my group I always encourage people if something is too legit to believe send it to me, we will ver- verify it don't click on any links don't click on any links please don't click on any, any links that you don't, you are not expecting whatsoever, and then on top of that, try to call the the, the 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 municipality or the department itself and say, look, I'm looking for a so and so person. Don't call the number on the tender. Google the mm. number. Go on the actual website. Call that number. Go to SCM. SCM guys is supply chain management. If you in tenders, you will see that a lot. So call the SCM department. Ask for that person. If the tender is not valid, as per the the, the feedback you are getting. Play like like run, run, run with all your money and all your efforts. So yeah, <laughs> that's great. So so bro, I'm seeing some requests here. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we can address this at the end. I don't know if you still got much. Uh, you know, obviously prepared. You do have. Uh, yeah. you want us to talk about? Uh, let so... me let, let me rather speak on. Let me rather just speak on two things and then we can open it up quickly. All right. So before you do yeah. that, I just wanna. Before you do that, I just want to give some shout outs here. But probably thank you for the likes, shares, Parks King, Stella Stars, Jono, Mklengwe, Vronga. And Mklengwe, thank you for the gifts as well. Uh, Vronga Holdings, Marufu, Denzil, Balit, uh, Rile Bohile. Thank you for the likes, guys. Let's keep on liking the live, guys. You can tap on your screens as many times as you want. TikTok does not stop you from doing that. Uh, yes, uh, view. Viewer is saying that my cousin was hit by a Department of Labor mm-hmm. one, Department of mm-hmm. Health one, uh, and coding yeah, everybody yeah. says that it's always an urgent tender. Yeah. <laughs> Mark T, thank what you is the the urgent nice. ones? All right, man, you can, you can, yeah, you said you wanted to speak about a few more things. Yeah. Yeah, two more things. Look, I just wanted to go back to the reference part of things, right? Guys, look, when it comes to your references, like I did say to you, it, was, it varies depending on the municipality uh, or other the requirements of the specific person that has ordered the, the tender to be advertised. So when it comes to references, I don't lose hope to say, look, I've never, uh, my business has never done anything or whatsoever. Use your own personal reference. You can always say, look, I've been, I've worked for so-and-so company, I've worked for so-and-so company, I've worked for so-and-so company. Yes, my business has not done this in the field. It's very, it's very new, but I'm not new. Then what you do is you attach your CV with your references. Um, it, 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 it helps. It helps a lot. It helps a lot. Your CV is quite key. If you know you still don't have the necessary uh, skills or rather the past experiences, 
look at the people that you will be working with. Like a business plan, when you do a business plan, when you're going to propose something, they also want to find out who will be doing what, who will be doing what, and what their CVs are. Apply the same uh, skills to, or rather, apply the same knowledge to your tender references. Ask yourself, who's going to be dealing with majority of these things? Is it another company? If it is, can I get them to send me maybe some confirmation to say we'll be working with them and they'll be working? It will be a joint venture for a certain portion, not 100% of the work, just a certain portion. Um, when it comes to third parties, it varies tender by tender. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it's 6%, sometimes 30% that you are allowed to give to them. It's not a fixed percentage. Again, the, the requester will always have their own mandatory fields or mandatory requirements. That's the first thing that I wanted to go back to references. And then I just wanted to also state that if you are not on CSD, now we're talking about government. If you're not on CSD, look, they're not going to consider you. But if they like you and they like how you responded, they can give you a call and say, look, we want to shortlist you, but you're not registered on CSD. Register on CSD ASAP and make sure everything is on point so that we can take you to the next level. That's when they really like what you are offering them, your RFQ and everything. Because when they look at your tender, before they check CSD or anything whatsoever, they first run for the costs to see is it going to be expensive. And then they also look at the, mini, the, 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 the spec or the functionality of whatever it is that you're offering them. Is it something that is in line with what they can do? Then they run for CSDs, references, all those other things they come after. So if they like what they saw, but you know, you don't have a CSD, they will give you a call. Say, look, sort out your text clearance ASAP. You have 10 days or whatever the case may be. So yeah. Awesome, man. Um, so, so what what is uh, a CSD, bro? Uh, and, okay. and how does one apply to get on or, 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 or what, what the case is? Yeah. Awesome stuff. So a CSD is a client, uh, su client supply database or customer supply database, depending on how you want to read it, but it is CSD. It's a government database whereby all vendors need to go and register and be uploaded on this database where the government can always find you there. In some instances, you will find that a specific uh, department will rather just filter out based on your commodities, whatever commodities you would have selected, and then they will just call you from there to say, look, this is who we are, this is what you're doing, we're responding, you are, you are welcome to do whatever references. Or... When you are responding, they will have to just find you there. If you're not there, they're not going to do business with you. This is a compliance thing whereby they push you in there. It verifies if your tax clearance, it verifies if your BBE is valid. It basically, it's basically a hub that allows, that makes life easy for them from a compliance check point of view. Awesome. And you said some of the things they need today uh, is things like tax clearance. That is correct. So, the, the, okay, I'm, I'm just going to mention the key ones because in most cases it, it, it varies depending on the industry and the type of tender they want. But the most important thing is you need to be a registered entity. If you are not, if you are sole prop, the chances of you getting that one is quite you know, close to impossible. If you are an NPC, a non profit company, or an NPO, only specific departments will take you, not everybody. So it needs to be a registered entity, whether it be a PTO Limited or NCOP. Um, like, that's the first one. Your CK documents needs to be sorted out. You need to be, you need to have your tax clearance uh, certificate. That one needs to be clean. That one goes without saying. You need your CSD registration. You need your BEE certificate. Again, now from a BEE point of view, points, you, you, you carry points if your score is like a one or a two. Sometimes when it's a three. It doesn't mean when your score is like a seven or yeah, it's level seven or something, you're not going to get the tender. You might get the tender. You might get the tender, but there might be special requirements that they need. That say, look, if you are getting the tender, but you need a specific this and this and that, I'm not going to mention it here. I don't want to sound otherwise, but there are specific requirements that they will ask if you're a level seven. But BE certificate is very important. It increases your chances of getting the tender as well because government is mandated to clear on that. Um, also, we, 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 they also need what? Uh, if you are a construction company, look, there's things like CIDB, you know, NHBRC, depending on the type of tender. Those are other special requirements that they will need. But the first ones that I've mentioned are quite key. If you have those ones, then you're on the right way to getting your first official tender. Even if you are yeah, a collections company, they, they're not so fussy about your NCR. They might, be, they might want it one day, a short list you. But yeah. Well, 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. And and before you speak about the last thing you wanted to talk about, I wanted to just uh, you know, there's there's this issue of 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 just understanding, which yeah. I think lack um lacks maybe. Um, you know, I had a situation whereby someone came to a, or a group of guys came uh, came to offices and they wanted assistance with regards to you know enforcement uh, you know of a contract so so they came and saying that you know we got a tender uh, mm -hmm. you know I think it was somewhere in the uh, free state I guess uh, so they said we got a tender and I'm like okay cool come let's see what what you're talking about if you're saying that you got a tender and um, so on investigation, so then we got a tender, but we're not getting paid. So in investigation, we actually realized that what actually happened is that this tender, which was to build schools, like a primary school or something, was actually awarded to some turnkey engineering company. Then what then happened with this company, this company then, then subcontracted a construction company, another lady with a construction company, uh with actually with the equipment and all these things then that lady then after she's done with the schools she, the guys are like actually we need some furniture some desks and whatever chairs then this lady now uh obviously doesn't or they want her to do whatever then contacts these guys and says guys there's uh, there's some furniture discs which are needed and all these things. Mm -hmm. These guys they go and they start this furniture company, and then they now obviously deliver the the the, the discs and whatever. Then now they're like to this lady, um, where's our money? And this lady yeah. is just gave them like ten percent, and she's quiet about it. And <laughs> so I was like. <laughs> Wait, wait, but now you can't, you're not awarded a tender. That's the yeah. thing, you know what I'm trying to say? You are like a subcontractor of a subcontractor of, of something, you know, going on here. And clearly you are taking advantage of, because this yeah. person yeah. knows. But but these guys, you know, in their minds, they were like, you know, we got a tender. I don't know, have you ever experienced mm -hmm. something like this? And, and how can people be aware of it? No, I haven't, and I've never had an experience whereby a guy basically that reached out to me and said they were affected by that. But that's something I think people need to be very cautious of because in most cases, I think in this situation, somebody got excited over something that does not belong to them. It was just a small portion of something that we're supposed to get, just a small piece. And then they decided to make it feel like magic. It's 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 their it's theirs magic, it's their people and I think we need to be cautious. I think the most important thing when you're going to, 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 to do such a thing is contracts. You need to sign a contract. Um, look, you need to sign a contract that basically restricts them from, from acting somehow, like this is their tender or maybe not even delivering. Because that's the, another thing that you don't want is contracting with somebody and then they don't deliver whatsoever. And then now the department is now waiting on you. It's like, how did you say you can do this? What happened? And these guys are like, look, we know we agreed and everything, but we want 70 or 80% of the tender now. We don't want the 10% that we spoke about. I think it's very important. If they award you a tender, make sure they're awarding it to you on good merits, not lies. Because once you lie, it becomes hard for you to deliver and then they can break this you. And once they do that, you're not going to be able to respond to tenders for like a long time, five maybe 10 years, depending on the seriousness of that. But yeah, no, no I mean, that's some hectic stuff. I, I've mm -hmm. never experienced yeah. that in any because my guys have that's reached out to me. Yeah. Yeah, so this situation, these guys were like, you know, they were like, I don't know, subcontractors of whatever, mm. but they are mine. Because now it's like, when you have delivered, you know, whatever, that the desk or the desk, yeah. so, who do you go to? Who do you go to to say, can I have my money? Because this this woman obviously, you know, she was nowhere to be found now, and they were that saying, you know, we want we want to go to the national treasury, we want to do this, we want to do that, but I think it's just something yeah. for people not to get excited if if yes. people say to you, you know, you have been because they in their minds they can say that we how do we got a ten, we got a ten, and 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 the funny and the, not even the funny thing, uh, but I mean the sad thing was that they really invested a, a lot of money into this like they really set up this factory 
to make these uh you know discs and, and spent a lot of money and i think the other guy was even losing his family you know because of this situation uh, but i think that's what people need to be cautious of because whenever you're mm-hmm. entering into to, into a deal as you said contracts but you also need to know that if, if things go wrong who do you turn to who do you go you know? to yes. who do yes. you go to who do you take to court when things go wrong uh it's very very important so another thing is like you see what this is another thing that I, I keep telling my guys in my free consultation right if you're going to do business with somebody don't allow yourself to be blinded by a proposal or an opportunity right um, i mean she can still go to the national treasury they can ban or restrict that person and the it numbers once they get look if there was an it number in the bidding of that tender they can block you from any other business that you might be doing business with in the future i think she can still do that and then she can find a way to trace this lady and and get their money but i always tell people never be blinded by an opportunity um, if if you are going to get a loan from or a credit card from or wherever, those people are not blinded by the salary you are earning. They're not blinded by your pay slip. They're not blinded by that. They're not blinded by the possibility of how much you're going to pay them once you pay them back. No, they go further. They check: Are you paying these other guys correctly? Are you um, are you looking good in the bureau? Do the same thing. It's important. Look, I've I've had a couple of sessions around credit management and a vendor verification. Even you as a business, you need to do a vendor verification process. Somebody comes to you, I want a tender. So it's okay, not a problem. Can I see the paperwork? Can I call to verify these guys? Yes, I can. Cool. Now I need to search you. Who are you? Do you have any debts away now as an individual? And if you do, what are the chances of you getting the tender, me doing the work, and then you going to pay off your debts instead of paying me? What are the chances of that? What are the chances of me losing? So the, uh, do a, a, a check on do everybody. Do diligence. Do it on everybody. You are free to do a credit check on that company. You are free to do that. It's not free. They're going to charge you. But um, at least you will have an, an advantage. Before you even do a, 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 a partnership, a register a company with somebody. Look, we are friends. We are chilling together. We, wanna, we want to, 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 to open a business together. I advise you. Pull credit reports on each other's first. Everybody come with their credit. I'm telling you now, because chances are one or one or two people are defaulted. Ooh. They've got defaults, they've got judgments, or one is under debt review. Already that's an immediate decline for tenders or any other businesses outside. Mm. So or your friends you, now. Your friends, or your friends, you are, you are, now you registered a company. Now you have a group of five people. Two people have debt reviews on their names. Your company is already uh, bad. It can't do work because it's it's linked to principles that can manage their finances. How are you going to manage the business wow. finances? So it's I'll, I'll speak to you, Henry, about a session around that because it's quite broad. That one can take long. I don't want to waste too much time on credit management and credit education and vendor mm. applications. So yeah, I think people need to be extra cautious. Look, don't be don't be fooled by proposals. The lady was fooled by a proposal. There was she was fooled by a letter of appointment, and she was like, "Yes, mm, there was some I'm guy." And they are uh, uh, tough, 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 tough corners were hit. I just want to speak yeah. to Vorongwa yeah. Holdings, man. Uh, my guy, I still have your number, number one. I still have your number. We can still talk more about this, the us partnering, especially around the financials. So for me, like I said, I do I assist small businesses. I've got, I've got packages when I do my business. When you register a company, it's like 550. It comes with almost everything. It comes with the tax clearance, comes with the CSD, it comes with the BEE certificate. It comes with a whole list of things because I'm trying to minimize the cost of starting for small businesses. So for, on that point where you said you can assist my customers with CSD, we've got that covered. But from a finance point of view, I think that's one thing we can talk about me and you. Um, I also have a workshop coming on the 25th of February. I think maybe you can play a plan around that. Maybe you can be part of the workshop as well and, and, and speak around how these guys can take care of their business, uh, finance literacy. I've listened to your, to your sessions with Henry. They were quite awesome. I think that could be very good for these beneficiaries that I'm going to uh, present to you on the 25th. But yeah, I just wanted to answer for Hunger Holdings then. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Denzel, thank you for the likes. Shares, Vurunga Holdings, thank you for the likes. Mklengwe, Balit, Lulu, thank you for the likes. And I see your requests, guys. We're going to accept your requests shortly. Uh, but before we do that, bro, um, you know, you, you you spoke about, which I think these these are things uh, people need to really understand. 
uh, request for quotations, request for proposals. Uh, what does this mean? And, and how does one, you know, position themselves in a place whereby, you know, they, they will actually uh, score points. I don't know if people can score points on that. You, you tell me the process. But they, uh, to me, it seems like these are important uh, terms uh, for people to understand. Okay. So in most cases, there are two, but you'll find that sometimes they add an I, a third one. So there's an RFQ, which is a request for a quote. Now, that's, in most cases, that's a quick and easy tender. They just need you to throw up a quote that meets their requirements, and then they'll, okay, we'll touch base on that. And then there's an RFP which is a request for a proposal. Now, this is not just a quote. You are now proposing a full on suite depending on the type of requirements. If they say they want people to build houses also, you need an RFQ, you need to present a full on proposal. What's gonna happen, the process, step by step, every single thing, now you're proposing a full on proposal. Now, your proposal is quite, this, these are the one, one of the most stressful things I need to, I, I, I need to tell you about. RFPs are stressful. They are the most stressful bits you can go for. People think it's, ah, it's an easy thing. It's not. Try and get legal involved. If you've got some, a lawyer friend or something, Henry's there, somebody to read through the RFP for you before you respond to it. Because now you're committing. It's like it's a, it's a full-on uh, commitment you're committing yourself to say this is what i can do and this is how i'm going to do it step by step understand the process but they're going to hold you accountable for that and rfq is just a quote in most cases you are more than welcome to talk more about your business and everything like a profile but an rfq is more around can you do this if so how much is it that's it proposal is can you do this how are you planning to do this who are you going to do it with like they need every single detail to that and then they take mm. it from there and then there's an rfi which is the They just want to know more information about something. Doesn't matter what. So, oh yes, these um, publishers did post it there. Also, the RFIs. Yes, the RFIs um, is another thing that they would also ask for. You will hardly see RFIs like you will see one in two months or in three months. RFQs you see every single day, every day. So let's go back to RFQs. An RFQ is a request for a quotation. They're asking a quotation. It will still have your normal documentation that they will require, um, like your declaration of interest. My declaration of interest is basically, so I'm not going to speak about declaration of interest on all three things because they all want it. Declaration of interest is a document that where you're declaring that you are not employed by the state, you are not, uh, you are not related to someone employed by the state, and then um, maybe you are not blacklisted or anything whatsoever. So they're trying to make sure that this is not a favor tender or anything like that. If you are employed by the state, they give you the opportunity to say yes and explain uh, why you responded to the tender or which department are you working for, what role and stuff like that. So it's not just a yes or no. It's a, if it's a no, they move on. If it's a yes, they need more information about that. Right? And then... Um, so at RFQ, you complete your normal tender documentation, your, your invitation to bid documents, you have to complete it. Thereafter, you will compile your code. In, in, in all RFQs, the code template is already attached, right? And then you will find, yes, SBT forms. And then you will find um, some tenders will say, we also need another code on your company letterhead. Now, if they need a quote on your company letterhead, then that means you need to submit two quotes. One will be on their template, one will be on your company letterhead, right? And then, um, simple as that, and then you submit it with all the other requirements. I don't want to go too deep into this because it's not, it's going to eat up everyone's time. A tender discussion takes about two hours or so. And then once that is done, you submit it, they respond to you. That's an RFQ. Then there's an RFP, oh God. An RFP, same process, nothing changes. It's just that the requirements change a bit. Um, an RFP, same process, the SBD forms, MBD forms, you will have to complete all those other things. And then once done, you will need to now have your own palette, your own document of a proposal that will have your background, you will have what you're proposing to them, what it will cost them, and the process, who will be employed, attach the CVs, 
who, who's got the experience to do this, who will be dealing with the finances when the money comes in. It's just comprehensive, which is why I charge. And I charge a very small price, come to think of it, for, for, for doing uh, RFPs, I, uh, for, for doing proposals. Proposal itself alone, whether it's for a government or a tender or non-tender, doesn't really matter. We do that at BB Hub. Again, I'll market to every chance I get. And then um, you submit it, you send it through. Now, this one can go through a series of levels. It can go through shortlisting, you can go to presenting. You need to come and present the proposal to see if it is in line. They're going to ask you cross question uh, you a lot, and then they can decide to, 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 to take you or not take you. It's just a lengthy process, but it's a lengthy, good process, a good experience. Um, never breaking, but I, I enjoy responding to tenders because you learn a lot along the way. RFI, quite simple, request for information. They want to know more about the, your company. Maybe they want to know about more about a such and something. You just complete that. Same as the RF2. It's, it's, it's not so stressful. It's just that it needs you to, to understand what you're putting in there. It must make sense because uh, when they ask for information, make sure that the information you're providing them is accurate and on point because they do. People think government people are sleeping. The SCM is not sleeping. I'm telling you now, it's not sleeping. They don't let things just go under carpet. They're like, ah, yes, it's fine, it's fine. No, they read through the whole document. They'll highlight one small thing in the middle of your document that you thought they would not see, but they will find it and then they will come back to you and say, what is this? And then, yeah. So those are the three things or three terms that you you will find when it's going to send us. Awesome. Ah, non non but thank you for the likes. Lulu Mshingwe, thank you for the likes. Amazing age, but Toby Le Sanili Siwe Wise Girl, thank you for the likes, guys. And we can keep on liking the live. You can just tap on your screens as many times as you want. TikTok doesn't stop you. Upscale 2015. Thank you for the likes. Uh so man, so, so in terms of quotation, right? Uh yeah. what, what's your strategy when it comes to quotations? Because you know, as, as you're trying to quote, you're always trying to think about the competition and, and what you know. That's 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 just the normal process, right? That's true. Uh, what has been your strategy? But obviously, it's not only just about having a low price. Uh, but but how, how how have you managed to to do that over the years? Uh, I know you said it's not just pricing, but it's always pricing. I think pricing is always there on top. Um, the more money they can save, the better. But now, if you are too mm. cheap, then they, they 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 thoroughly go through everything. But are you legit? What if you just made up a price with your head and you just want to get this money and run? You know, they're asking all these things now. You, it becomes a, a very suspicious. So what I do is, if it's something I can offer, like right now, um, okay, because I'm not responding to it anymore, it's fine. Um, Cedar wants... Um, it's what's bidding for something. So they want an office to be open, a, a mobile office to be open in Pumalanga. So I, I don't do in Pumalanga to offer the services that we are offering. 100% of the services we are offering. On top of that, they also want them to assist these guys with uh, CEDA pro processes. So I can go in by pricing or I can go in with my own pricing to say, look, this is my pricing. I'm giving you experience. I'm giving you what I'm already doing. Um, I'm not going to just uh, introduce my person just because I want a tender. Um, this is my pricing. And then where, where, you, where, you, where you're going to get them you know, is the value proposition, right? For example, uh, your value proposition is quite key. If your pricing is high, don't just make a pen high because it's a pen. Make a pen high and then add the value proposition. With this pen, it can last you six to seven years. Now, this gives them comfort to say, look, we don't have to bid again for the next six to seven years because this pen will cover us for the next six to seven years, you know? So that's why it's expensive. So if your pricing is expensive, what value are you bringing in besides the standard thing that they're giving? Always, always add a value proposition when you do your tenders. If you're going to do street constructions what is the value proposition you're going to give it are you just going to put tar paint and move on or are you just also going to maybe propose something i don't know say you bring the stop signs for that one road only at least it's going mm, to for maintenance or after after you know whatever after yes. after sales sort of assistance what are you going to do yes what are you going to do and it's quite important that you do that and then so for me value proposition comes immediately after pricing. If it's something I don't offer, I try to go to price war with uh, competitors because if it's something I don't have, then 
let me go cheap. If I get it, I get it. If I don't get it, I don't get it. And then I also add a value proposition there and there. So when they start cross questioning me things that I wouldn't know because I'm not offering this thing, uh, I must go. I must be able to go back to that guy again. This guy could give me bad information, good information. I wouldn't know. Uh, and then so it's something I'm not offering. So, but if it's something I'm offering, pricing, I leave my pricing as is, non negotiable. But I add the best value proposition you can find out there that is hard to even question and then I take it from there. Awesome, 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 awesome. upscale uh, 2015, thank you for the likes, shares Lulu Balit to me, thank you for the likes. So bro, can we uh, accept some requests now? Yeah, go for it. Alright, cool stuff man, I'm going to accept your requests guys now and uh, yeah man, if you've got any questions for like an Ipo here, you know, just go for it, right? And and let's just get uh things moving. Let's just get things moving. Um yeah, uh Manzo, how are you? Hello? Oh gosh, 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 gosh. <laughs> My network is doing its own things right now. Why for right. two seconds? Yeah, but we Okay. All right, cool. All right, Denzel, thank you for the likes, man. Vimango, thank you for sharing the live. Thank you for sharing the live. Um, and Chimp, thank you for, for, for liking the live as well. Uh, let me see if there are any uh, questions. So Tumi was talking about financial assistance when one gets a, an order for a job. Um, I don't know if Klakanipo, you know about that, but uh, I know we once had, I think, Miss T over here. Uh, their company does uh, purchase order funding. So if you want to pursue that, you can hit me up. Uh, then I will connect you to, to Miss T. Uh, because yes, their, their company specifically uh, does purchase order funding. Uh, any any thoughts on that, bro? Thank you for that, Henry. I've been in engagements with her a couple of times, actually. We've had sessions uh, on the side, and I love their process. Look, um, their process has a lot of things that might make you feel like, hey, they're going to take so much. But again, they're the ones taking the risk more than you. And I, I support it. Um, I still need to have a session with her because she might be joining me on the next session, on, on my workshop, because um, what they are offering is jam. And um, the cost that it comes with makes sense. It makes sense in a sense whereby... If I'm taking up all the risk, this is the process we need to follow to avoid you not paying me back and to also avoid uh, um, any major losses, you understand? So um, to talk more about that is, uh, it, it's gonna be a bit lengthy, but the, 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 the service offering is quite awesome. I don't wanna lie. If I don't have a, a money to respond to a specific tender, <laughs> I'm definitely speaking with them. One of the big things that people need to understand when using her is that she, not her per se, but their company is that uh, it's the banking. And I think that is jam. The banking that needs to be loaded on CSD and everything, that is the jam whereby it, minima, it mitigates the risks of them losing too much. You know, They need to create a specific account for your business that will actually be under them, but the contracts and everything, the paternal money comes in, they take what they take, you will also have access to that to that account. You can choose to keep the account or not, or whatever the case may be. It's That's like the one thing that I saw to say, okay, this is the one thing that I feel like um, it, it's quite key and it basically explains why they're taking such a big risk to give you money. They've got a lot of money. I think it's, three, 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 there's a lot of money, man. I think it's, 300 million or 100 million that is there that needs to be given out to you guys as a loan to do your tenders and then you share whatever it is that you need to share. There are a lot of benefits. I don't want to touch much on it because I will be taking her spotlight, but follow her. I'll make sure I share her details with you. I don't know please. if you have them. And then also please show them on the group as well. Even the document she once sent me. And then, yeah, let's, let's make sure everybody gets the support and help they need. Okay, cool stuff, man. So you just send me what you have and, and I'll, I'll post it on the group as well. Uh, if you want to join the WhatsApp group, guys, the link is in the bio in my link tree. It's the last, last link. It says join success inspiration uh, WhatsApp groups. Don't worry about a lot of people posting because only admins can post. Sisanda asked, uh, which avenues can one use to complain about tender corruption when it's being awarded to the same people? Yeah. 
<laughs> let's let's I, I, I think sometimes you know sometimes um that's why I was saying earlier on there are tenders we should respond to and there are tenders we should just let go of. I think some other things let's just let's let's leave it like that. A lot of people mm. are losing their lives because of tenders mm. and I'm not mm. it's it's not a secret. We we a lot of people have been buried because you just wanted to respond to your bed of a bridge and your bid was the best and the new mm loved you more than anyone the counselor wants you but the mm wants this person the municipal manager and then you take it and then the guy that was supposed to take it ends your life so if the something is like that don't be part of the investigation chip it's not your job let siu deal with it because <laughs> uh, let's be honest you 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 Tough out there. I like that, man. I like that, man. Just, just, yeah, you know, it is what it is, my guy. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, so, so you just have to use your discretion. You just have to use your discretion. Yeah. There's another T. I see Publishers here. She posted a lot of, uh, she posted something quite gentle. She said um, she's part of the evaluation thing. Oh, God, she's attending evaluation meeting, so she couldn't attend. So she was saying that she's seeing a lot of mistakes. So when she evaluates the documents, a lot of people are, are making a lot of mistakes that are, are killing mm. them. I think it was going to be awesome to have her as well to join so that we can touch base on those mistakes that she's seeing and take it from there. Awesome. So what I'll do is that I'll reach out to her and 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 see if uh, you know she can maybe you know we can have a, a session uh, here uh, together. Then uh, yeah, I, I think we can just uh, bounce off you know the ideas okay. and just leverage on each other. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. That would uh, be then awesome. We'll, awesome. Then we'll stuff. see where it goes. Uh man. Uh, I think we 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 our time is fast spent here. I don't know if you've got maybe some last uh you know just just thoughts or, or some last words on this that you want to share on the, with the guys yeah when responding to tenders and you've got a company again i'm going back to what i said earlier on this is a topic on its own we'll talk about it some other time we did have a session on this but it's quite important when you're responding to a tender and you're in a company with friends and families do not respond unless you understand everyone's past if someone has a criminal record or someone has had another company that was discontinued maybe in the past from getting tender, understand everybody you are going into business with because you will lose millions over a small thing that someone did not disclose. A judgment. Again, do not, I'm repeating, okay, I'm not repeating this, but I'm saying this for the first time. Everybody here, if you've got a business, do not go under that review. No matter what, it will be the worst mistake you do. I know sometimes it's tough. Rather deal with the fire, have a bad credit profile. Um, let it be terrible. Let them list you. Let them load the default. Let them load the judgment. It's all right. Don't load a debt review if you're in business and you're hustling every day to get, to get funding, to get, don't go on a debt review. It will be the worst mistake you make. You will lose a perfectly, like it's a, an opportunity that lands on your lap to say, look, we like your business. This is amazing. Here's a hundred million. Send us something. You send them something. They love it. They, they pre-approve it. And then they find out you're under debt review. And they're like, ah, bro, we, can't, we can't give you this much. You can't manage money. So I'm sorry. Then you lose it. So that review, forget about it. Uh, understand your people. Understand your mother. If you're going to business with your mother, Mama, this is business. I need to know how are you handling your finances. Papa, booty. Yes, you might be bringing in all this money, but it's pointless if you've got a bad credit record or bad criminal record. So yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to touch on. Awesome. So this is saying that I've, I refused debt, debt review and I came out strong, proud of myself. Uh, that I think we should have just a session on that so people to understand more about what goes on with that. Uh, viewer is talking about tax implications. I think that's a, a, another session uh, that we can go there. Maita Paul, we will send Miss T's contacts on the WhatsApp group for purchase order funding. So please join the WhatsApp group, Success Inspiration. The link is in the bio in the link tree. Uh, Shlakanipo, thank you very much, man.